everyone, and welcome. Uh, we're so glad you could join us today for a conversation on two key focus areas for ISACA, digital trust and IT audit and assurance. I'm Karen Heslop, the Vice President of Content Development at ISACA, and with me is Robin Lyons, ISACA's IT audit professional practices principal. So before we dive into the specifics, let's quickly define digital trust from an audit perspective. Robin, from an IT audit perspective, what does digital trust mean? I think that's a great question and a great idea to actually frame our discussion today, Karen. Um, from an audit perspective, digital trust is um, confidence in the integrity of the security and privacy um, controls that an organization has in place. And also it relates to the trust with those people who are involved in minimizing delays or obstacles to achieving um, um, organizational objectives. Okay. So why is IT audit such an important component of digital trust? I think that um, IT audit is important from the perspective that it provides objectivity to this whole framework. And, and from a business perspective, when there are high levels of trust, um, that encourages people and creates a willingness to innovate. And innovation is something that makes organizations stand apart. And IT auditors have always been in the business of looking at practices um, from an objective perspective and working with organizations if there are potential pitfalls to what an organization wants to do from an innovative perspective. And auditors can absolutely contribute that to the digital trust framework. So that's a great segue into my next question. Um, how are IT auditors such as yourself um, and, and including so many ISACA members, how are they already supporting and advancing digital trust, understanding objectivity and innovation? Yep, that's a great question, Karen. I think that digital trust acknowledges that online activity and transactions are here and, and they're not going away. So as organizations continue to work with different partners from a digital perspective. Um, they want to make sure that they um, are in working with trustworthy uh, partners and that they have confidence in those relationships so that they feel comfortable with the transactions that they're engaging with. So as organizations try new things, IT auditors are in a perfect position, not just to um, provide the perspective of whether or not controls are effective or adequate, but they're also able to work in a consultative role as new processes are being rolled out or as existing processes are being modified so that they can have, so that the organization can have confidence in, in what it's doing. And as we talked about, um, trust is a, is a key part of what we're trying to promote right now through digital trust. And trust is essential so that partners are willing to work with each other in new and different ways. And Unfortunately, if there is a loss of trust in these relationships, it could actually um, reduce or halt an organization's efforts at innovation. And um, unfortunately, unfortunately, that could lead to an organization not being able to distinguish itself in the market. So auditors play a big role in that. Yeah. So, so how, because digital trust is so tied to innovation, how, what can IT auditors do to drive digital trust initiatives within the organization or enterprise? I think they can drive that by um, being that, that sounding board and, and also emphasizing that consultative role where they can work with organizations to say, um, here's the approach that the organization wants to take. Here are potential pitfalls that may exist if, if this particular new initiative should, should not work the way it's designed to work. Um, and I think that having that, that candid conversation with organizations allows organizations to make informed decisions as to whether or not, yes, we do want to proceed with this new initiative, or maybe we need to table it until we can do it in a manner that's more, that is safer, and that, that, would, be, uh, that would drive the end result that, that their consumers want. Yeah. So uh, earlier you touched on um, suppliers, vendors, the supply chain. You know, where do you see the key touch points between an enterprise and their suppliers? And how does IT audit fit into that? I think that's a fantastic question. <laughs> um, I, I really do, because I think that supply chain now is not supply chain that it was years ago. And the reason I say that is I do believe that in order to meet 
um, the needs of their end users. Organizations are looking at the supply chain actually as a chain and not looking at individual links in that particular supply chain. And so from an audit perspective, I think what that means is that we look at the entire process and we say, where is the technology? And so I, I actually propose that when we're looking at supply chain, we you know, follow the, the technology. If you're, you've heard people say, show me the money or follow the money, I say, follow the technology. And I'll give an example of that. Yeah. So if we're looking at machine learning, machine learning can be used to indicate um, where an organization needs to create specific product types. So machine learning can help do the analytics that, that will help us identify that. Machine learning also can tell us what vendors, what shippers are compliant with the terms of a shipping agreement. So we're using machine learning for what would be in the traditional supply chain in two different phases. So we're using it in the production phase when machine learning is telling us what we actually need to produce. And then we're also using machine learning in the distribution phase where it's telling us which of these um, partners that we're using for shipping, which one of those are actually compliant with the terms and, and handling shipping in the ways that we want to. So I think that if, if we follow where the technology is in the supply chain, that's going to let us know where auditors can provide the most value. Yeah, that's great. Um, so many of you have heard that ISACA is uh, creating and launching a digital trust ecosystem framework early in the fourth quarter. Um, I do encourage all of you to visit ISACA's uh, webinar page to sign up for a sneak peek. That webinar is on September 22nd. It is a member exclusive. Um, so Robin, you're familiar with the Digital Trust Ecosystem Framework. Right. Uh, how, it, it's obviously meant for many, many audiences, but how do you think auditors and spe uh, specifically will find it useful? Um, I, I actually love this this discussion because I think it, it touches on an area in audit that I think that auditors as well as organizations have have believed that there's value, but have maybe struggled a little bit in how they can um, actually do this in a meaningful way. And the areas that I'm talking about are culture and human resources. And I think when auditors talk about, well, I need to do a culture audit, I need to do a human resources audit. How can I do this so that it adds value and how that so that's meaningful to the organization? The digital trust ecosystem framework actually speaks to culture and human resources. And I think from that perspective, to actually have not just an area that's being spoken about as an audit topic, but actually activities within the framework that will be valuable to auditors so that they can do culture and human resources um, audits. Mm -hmm. And I'll give an example. So a lot of our audits, and especially those security audits, will talk about um, user awareness training. And so, um, and typically what we'll do in an audit, and, and we probably realize when we're doing it, it's not the most effective way. We see that an organization has a user um, awareness uh, training program, and we look at who's completed the, the program, who hasn't. But I think the digital trust ecosystem framework can help us do can actually enhance how we do those audits because when we look at user awareness, the activity that's in the framework talks about what the goal is from a skills perspective and then what's the current skill set. And I think that's really important from a user awareness uh, standpoint because it takes us from trying to make a one size fits all, did these people complete the training? And it elevates us to have people completed training that's going to help them in their particular roles in the company. And so I think that's just an example of how the digital trust ecosystem framework will be helpful to IT auditors. Yeah, that's fantastic, Robin. So we have a question from the audience from Richard and Richard asks, how does internal audit build trust upfront so that um, when asked by the business before they do something, in other words, are we? How do we build trust up front, and not just after an audit is completed? That's a fantastic, um, fantastic question, Richard. And I, I think that what's really helpful is um, I'm not a fan of buzzwords, but I'll use one: um, <laughs> transparency. Um, and I really think when we start to work with a group, if we tell people, "Here's what we're trying to achieve," and not just from 
the high level of the audit itself. You know, we're doing an audit in this particular area, so here's here's the organizational objective. But I think if we talk to people and they have an understanding, when I ask for this information or in the course of the interview, what I'm trying to get at is a better understanding of how it works. Or if, if you're aware of some issue that's happened, I would be upfront about that and say, you know, we're doing this audit and I found out that I've heard that there may have been an issue with, you know, this particular yeah. area. Be upfront about that and say, can you tell me if, if this is true that this has happened? Can you explain to me what happened, why it happened? And can we work together so that we can prevent it from happening in the future? Yeah. And I think I think just tell just being honest with people and telling them what you're doing, because I think I think it's human nature. If people don't know, they will fill in the gaps and they may fill in those gaps, those gaps with information that, that's maybe not true. Um, so I think if you're you're honest with them and tell them, here's what I'm trying to achieve, I think people will work with you. And you've built in credibility at the front of your audit and it'll continue throughout the course of the audit as you continue to communicate with people. I, I you know, another thing occurs to me, Robin, and I wanna run this by you. So in the direct and monitor domain in the digital trust ecosystem framework, there's a whole um, set of practices around establishing a digital trust strategy. And it would it, it seems to me that once an organization has set that strategy, that strategy could then feed into audit planning. What do you think? I think, I absolutely think so. Um, I think that any pieces that make our audit uh, more transparent and make it more of a structured process where people don't feel that they're hit with any surprises um, is beneficial. And if they can rely on that portion of the digital trust um, framework to do that, I think that's a fantastic thing to do. Yeah, that's great. Um, we also have a question from Nora who, who's asking, how can someone who's looking to transition from HR to the digital trust ecosystem, um, how is that gonna work? And and if you don't mind, Robin, I think I'll take that one. Sure. So, you know, HR practices are really in the digital trust ecosystem framework. Robin touched on culture, um, but there's also another domain called human factors. And so um, I think HR is really addressed in both of those domains within the uh, DTEF or digital trust ecosystem framework. Um, and there's a lot, Robin talked about um, awareness training, and that would fall into the culture domain. Um, but then you also have training, you know, employees get trained on technology. So we're rolling out a new system. Everybody needs to get trained on that technology. And, and that's the intersection of, of people and technology or, or what we call human factors. So I think that there's going to be a lot in there um, for human resources. And I delight in this question because ISAC has always been so good at serving IT professionals, but the DTEF is bigger than just IT. And so just having you all think about, hey, this touches other areas of the business, it touches HR, it's going to touch marketing, for example, is fantastic. Thanks, Karen. And can I jump in just a little bit? It's, yeah, absolutely. It's a little bit of a tangent, but maybe not so much. But I did want to talk a little bit about ethics since we're talking about some of the softer yeah. areas of, of IT. I, I believe that as organizations are um, focusing more on sustainability, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, and um, ethics and technology, I think that auditors can play a big role in all of those areas. But I think one of the areas and maybe just because I like it. Um, I, think, <laughs> I, think, I think ethics and technology is an area where, where auditors can definitely play a role. Um, and so I think that as we're starting to use technology in different ways and in new ways that you know we haven't seen before, auditors can play a role in whether or not that's actually an ethical use of the technology. Yeah. And so um, just a, um, there's an organization called Ethics OS, and they have actually created a toolkit where they have identified, they've identified risks in the ethics of technology. So it's really interesting. So if you have a chance, check that out. But so for example, um, one thing that they would talk about is the monetization of data. And so I think that since we're so close to data, we follow the you know data as it flows throughout organizations and as it flows throughout processes, mm -hmm. IT auditors are very well poised to say, are we doing anything with that data that maybe is not ethical, that's maybe not in the best interest of the, com of the company in the event that it becomes disclosed that this company used your data this way. So yeah. I think that we're in a good position to uh, to play a role with that. 
Yeah, it's such a good point. Um, I'm going to come back to Kristen's question in a second, but Richard just quickly asked that I had mentioned direct and monitor and, and asked, are these all mapped to COVID 2019? So COVID, COVID and, and the DTEF are two different things, right? COVID is a fantastic framework for the governance of information and technology. Digital trust is bigger than just governance. Now, governance absolutely as a, is an important component. So in the direct and monitor domain, which is one of six in the DTEF, you'll see a lot of COVID in there. Um, but in, for example, enabling and support, you're going to see a lot of ITIL. What we did when we were building this framework was really take, look at all of, of the bodies of knowledge that were out there. So we looked at ITIL, we looked at ISO, we looked at NIST, for example, and we kind of brought them all together where appropriate for digital trust. Um, and Christian asks, um, Robin, you had mentioned a culture and, and human resources audit um, earlier. I mean, his question is, does that mean that confirmation of adequate training forms the integrals of the digital trust requirement? I would say confirmation is a starting point. Um, and I think if you wanted to look at this from a maturity standpoint, I think that if you're in, in the beginning phases, confirmation of training would be the beginning. I think that as, as the, the assessment matures, that the look of training would relate more to, is the training actually effective? And so, and how you could get measurements or, or uh, data around the effectiveness of the training that's going to vary from organization to organization. But I, I'm not really confident and wouldn't really recommend that just confirmation that the training did happen would be adequate. So I, mm -hmm. I would encourage to I would encourage doing more in that area yeah. and more, more towards the path of effectiveness. So um, another question, which is from all perspectives of technology, what are your recommendations for an auditor to expand their knowledge in terms of technical and managerial skills in addition to their recognitions like a CISA? That's a fantastic question because I'm a big proponent, proponent of, uh, you know, we talk often about uh, company or business resilience. I'm a fan of career resilience. And so to do that, I feel that auditors are in a position where because things are changing so rapidly and we know that they are, and I think that's, you know, I think the expectation is just to expect that things will change. And so from a career perspective, I think we have to keep our eyes on what do I want my career to look like? If I'm looking to, I want to be in a managerial position in, in audit, then those, then take the opportunity to, to actually um, take advantage of um, education in those areas. It could be um, webinars, seminars, workshops, I, I absolutely recommend that you get a mentor if you want to be um, to achieve a higher level in your position uh, to be like a director or a VP of audit. So that's that's the managerial piece. As far as the technical skills themselves, um, I don't claim to be athletic, but I will say um, you can learn something from anywhere. And something I've learned from sports and especially tennis is you play where the ball is going to be. You don't play where the ball is. And so I think that we in our careers, we have to be on top of technology because that you know we have to do our jobs mm -hmm. and we want to do our jobs well so we're familiar with what's with what's going on currently but we also have to make an informed and somewhat of a guess on where we think think things are going to head just so we can keep our our careers on track so that we can meet the goals that we've set for ourselves uh, and meet our career aspirations so um i think that's that's the big piece of it is is to yeah. try to look ahead to see where the technology is um I will mention here that from an emerging tech uh, perspective, um, if anyone is interested in getting a foundation in emerging tech, ISACA does offer a certification in emerging technology. Um, this offering is actually a program of four separate and distinct uh, certificates. And there's nothing that says that you have to, to take the certificate. This could just be a knowledge building experience for yourself. And those areas are AI, blockchain, cloud, in IOT, so someone could get a certificate in those areas individually, or if someone is particularly ambitious, get all four and then get a, cert a certification in emerging technology from ISACA. And I, I, I think the, the importance of, of having that foundational understanding is that when things change, 
you know how it works when things are normal. You, you know what the what the routine expectation is for the technology. And so when, when technology evolves, you have that solid understanding that you can say, I understand it well enough so that I can understand the variations of it. Yeah. Robin, I absolutely love that analogy of the tennis and looking where the ball is going to be. Um, and I think you touched on a lot of the really hot topics, AI, IoT, blockchain, for example. Um, and, and with that, can you share um, with the audience some of the newest IT resources, audit resources available from ISACA? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of my favorite things to talk about, because at ISACA, uh, in my role, I get a chance to actually work uh, with people on, on these things. One of the things that we have coming out very, very soon, August 8th, is the IT Audit Fundamentals Program. And so this program is it's targeting uh, those who are new to IT audit. And uh, people can be new to IT audit because they're just beginning their careers, or they could be new to IT audit because they have uh, uh, been in another area of audit, whether that's financial or whether they've been in another assurance area, such as risk or compliance. So this uh, program is to give people a foundation in the fundamentals of IT audit. Um, and that, again, is releasing August 8th. And uh, this is a certificate that, um, that ISACA is offering. And the genesis behind this is that ISACA was very much aware that there are people who want to get into the field of IT audit, but there's um, a gap that needs to be bridged between where the people are now from a knowledge perspective, also from a skills perspective. And this IT audit fundamentals program is, is bridging that gap so that people can, um, can actually start their careers in, in IT audit. Uh, one thing about this too is that there are no prerequisites so there's no prior experience required. So if anyone's starting from a clean slate, um, that's a program that, that will be very beneficial for you. Um, from a white, white paper perspective, I'm really super excited about this too. Uh, we are offering um, a white paper series in ML. And so this is the Practitioner's Guide to, um, to Auditing Machine Learning. Uh, machine learning. And so this is a, a two paper white paper series. And so the first white paper talks about, I call it the mechanics of machine learning. So if this is a new topic for anyone, this white paper series will address the questions that you may have, give you an understanding of machine learning from a fundamental perspective. And I like this white paper specifically because we worked so that people could get a fundamental understanding of the technology, but the white paper also offers very practical and current examples so that uh, when you're reading the white paper, you can take the concept that you've just learned and see a practical application of it, which I think is fantastic. So part two in the white paper series talks about compliance. So it's looking at machine learning from a compliance perspective. And that, that white paper series is scheduled to release um, the end of, third quarter, end of second quarter, beginning of third quarter. Um, also what we have um, from offerings from ISACA are our audit programs. I love working on those too. Um, we have already released this year an audit program in uh, database auditing and physical and environmental security. And the ones that are coming up uh, throughout the rest of the year are related to um, identity and access management and ransomware, which, as we know, is a, still a challenge that we have in our industry. So those are the four uh, audit programs that we have this year. All of the audit programs, I think, do a great job of describing controls and control objectives that we need to look at when we audit these respective areas. Um, but I will highlight the database audit program because since we knew going in that this is not an area that a lot of people have expertise in, um, we actually provided a lot of information about just databases and database auditing itself within that audit program. So if anyone has uh, a desire to learn more about database auditing or you know is, is new to that's a new audit topic for that person, I, I highly recommend that audit program. Great. Thank you, Robin. Thank and I you. know we're running out of time. I do, I do want to reiterate the first point that you talked about, that new IT audit fundamentals certificate. For those of you that have a robust or, or a larger internal audit department and you're bringing in people new to audit, this is a fantastic program to get them up to speed and get some training really before they're eligible to sit for the CISA exam. Um. And uh, with that, I just want to thank you all for joining us today. I want to really sincerely thank 
Robin and 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 Robin, thank you for sharing your expertise with us. Um, please visit www.isaka.org backslash digital hyphen trust to find several resources from Isaka on digital trust, including a white paper and a short online digital trust course that is free to members. Um, have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. It's been great. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, everyone.